All right, it is your last video of the school year. Hooray. Thank you for sticking through with me all year long. I truly appreciate it. So what we're going to be doing today is we are going to, by Maya, we are going to be doing kind of a visual representation, a tree diagram once again, of these multiple dependent events. So let's start with kind of the basic example that we started with last time. Remember that cooler of soda. And in that cooler of soda, there were a bunch of sprites and a bunch of Cokes. And in particular, there were 12 sprites, 22 Cokes. And what I want to do is I want to draw a tree diagram to show all the possibilities of how I could select two of those sodas. So I'm going to take one soda. And I could either get a Sprite or a Coke. Pretty simple, right? Now, if I pick a Sprite on the first one, my next one could either be a Sprite or a Coke. And if I had chosen a Coke on the first one, again, I could get either a Sprite or a Coke for my next draw. Now, we're always going to give you this tree diagram here. You're not going to need to make it. You just need to fill in the numbers and probabilities on there. So let's take a look at these numbers here. Remember that there were 34 total. So if I reach in and I select just one soda at random, what's the chance that it is a Sprite? Well, there's 12 Sprites out of 34 total. So there's 12 Sprites out of 34 total, which means my chance of selecting a Coke was 22 out of 34. So it's still on that first draw. We have a 22 out of 34 chance of selecting a Coke. One thing you'll notice, if you add these two together, 12 out of 34 plus 22 out of 34, it adds up to 34 out of 34, which is just equal to 1. So every time it branches off, it should add up to 1. So those top numbers, 12 plus 22, should add up to that bottom number, 34, and it does. So now what we're going to do is we're going to play a little hypothetical world here. Let's pretend that we selected a sprite first. So we had a 12 out of 34 chance of selecting a sprite. Let's say that that happened. Well, how many sprites are going to be left? Well, if I just took one, then there's only... 11 sprites left out of 33 total sodas remaining. Now, if I selected a sprite first, we should still have all the Cokes remaining because I didn't take any yet. So I took a sprite, but I still left all of the Cokes there. So there should still be 22 out of 33 Cokes remaining. So that's the first hypothetical world. Now let's go into the second hypothetical world. And this is the world where I selected a Coke first. So if I selected a Coke first, I should still have all my sprites remaining, right? So I should still have 12 out of 33 sprites remaining. I took a Coke, I didn't take a Sprite. So there's still only 33 sodas remaining, but I have all 12 sprites. Now, if I selected a Coke first, how many Cokes are remaining? Well, now I have a 21 out of 33 chance of selecting a Coke. One way that you can kind of check if you did this correctly is, do these two numbers equal this bottom number when you add them together? So 12 plus 21, yes, it equals 33. So probably did it correctly. So now what we have to do is, again, very similar to what we did last time with the tree diagrams, is we have to multiply. So if I want to find the probability of this pathway happening, going sprite and then sprite, we can just multiply 12 out of 34 times 11 over 33. And if you do that, you end up with 0.1176. And that's the chance that you get both sprites. If I want to know the chance of getting a sprite and then a Coke, Again, we just multiply those together, and it becomes 0.2353. If you want the chance of getting a Coke first and then a Sprite second, it's again 0.2353. You can kind of see that 
the same numbers end up getting multiplied on top and bottom. And lastly, what's the chance of selecting both Cokes? We take this one times this one, which gives us 0.4118. And in this question, it was asking, suppose you get two sodas, what's the probability that both are Cokes? Well, that is this answer right down here. It's a 41.18% chance. And it should be the same as what you saw in your last notes. So this is just a better visual representation to see what's going on and show you all the different possibilities. Let's do one more example. You've got a bag of fruit and in that fruit there's three apples and five oranges. So eight total. I'm going to make a little note of that. There's eight total pieces of fruit. You're going to go in and you're going to select two pieces of fruit at random and here's the key phrase without replacement. That means after you take it out you're not putting it back. So we have three apples, five oranges. What's the chance that your first draw is an apple? Well, there's three of them. So you have a three out of eight chance of selecting an apple. And your chance of getting an orange is five out of eight. So now let's go back to hypothetical world. Let's pretend that we selected an apple first. So if I select an apple, there's not going to be three anymore. There's only going to be two. So this is going to be a two out of seven chance of selecting an apple on the second draw. Now, if I selected an apple on the first draw, I still have all my oranges left. So I have a five out of seven chance of selecting an orange there. Now let's go to a different hypothetical world. I'm going to draw some circles here to represent all the fruit. There were one, two, three, four, five oranges and three apples. So there were eight total pieces of fruit. Now let's suppose that we selected an orange first. So I'm going to take this orange and eat it. It was delicious. What's your probability of selecting an apple now? Well, there's still three apples left because I, I ate the orange, not the apples. So I still have all three of my apples left and there were seven total pieces of fruit remaining. Seven total pieces remaining. And what's my chance of selecting an orange? Well, you see that there's four oranges left. I only ate one of them. So there's four left. And once again, to check this, you can kind of add these together. Two plus five gives you seven. That's good. Three plus four gives you seven. That's good. And three plus five gives you eight. That's good. So next, what we're going to do is we're just going to multiply straight across. So to find the probability of apple then apple, you just take three eighths times two sevenths, and that gives you point ten seventy one. This next one would be point two six seven nine. We get another twenty six seventy nine. And the last one is 3571. And by having these, it'll make the rest of these questions a whole lot easier. First question says, what's the probability that both of the fruits will be apples? So you pick an apple first and an apple second. Well, that's this one right here. So 0 0.1071, that gives you 10.71 percent. What's the probability that you pick an orange and then an apple? So you start with an orange, that's this one here, but then you follow it up with an apple, that's this one here, and it's 0.2679. And that's 26.79 percent. What's the probability that you pick an apple followed by an orange. So you go apple and then an orange. Well, that would be you start here with an apple and then you follow it up with an orange and it's still just going to be 0.2679. And lastly, what is the probability that both of the fruits are oranges? So you get an orange on the first one 
and an orange on the second one. That's going to be this one down here, 0 0.3571. And that's 35.71%. One other type of question that could possibly be asked is kind of similar to what we did in that last uh, lesson on independent events. And what's the probability that you get exactly one of each? What's the chance that you get exactly one of each? Well, let's take a look at all these scenarios. If you go here, you pick both apples. If you go here, you pick both oranges. You didn't get one of each. But if you go here or here, that means you did get one of each. You got one orange and one apple. And so the probability of getting one of each would be 0.2679 plus 0.2679. And that's how you'd calculate that. So you've got a little bit to do on your own, followed by a quiz. And then you are all set for learning new stuff. And then come on back next week. We'll take that test and then we'll get you out of the school year. Thanks for watching and have a great summer break.